All right, this is a, this is a cross-section of the spinal cord, including the dorsal root ganglia right here. You see the pointer? Can you see that? Right there, dorsal root ganglia. So this structure right here carries afferent or sensory neuron unipolar cell bodies that are, that are um, going to be headed into the dorsal horn of the gray matter right there. Uh, landmarks that we're looking at here on the cross-section of the spinal cord would include the uh, dorsal uh, sulcus right here. There's the central canal. Right here we have the, the ventral fissure. We have right here the, uh, the dura mater that extends around the entire structure. We have between that and the surface of the, uh, of the spinal cord, which we see right here, and pia mater on that area's surface. We see in between them arachnoid mater and the corresponding subdural and subarachnoid spaces. Uh, within the central canal, we'll magnify that in just a moment, but we can see uh, ependymal cells, supportive neuroglial cells that support the circulation of, uh, and flow of uh, CSF through this area. This would be the ventral horn of the gray matter, and the ventral horn would contain both large alpha motor neurons that are headed out to skeletal muscle, and uh, as well as multipolar association neurons. Uh, and these association neurons, if you notice right here, are going to also be dealing with the outgoing motor responses, visceral motor responses from autonomic uh, thoracolumbar outflow in the lateral horn that we see here. Uh, here we see uh, actual neuron axons, all of white matter that we see here and the spinal cord as well it would be axons of the uh, many hundreds of millions of uh, multipolar association neuron cell bodies in the gray matter have found here. So these would be myelinated uh, out here by oligodendrocytes uh, up to 60 at a time and the pathways that we see here that move peripherally into the from the dorsal root ganglia would have neuron axons that are multi uh, that are unipolar in nature and that would be associated with Schwann cell myelination um, as we move into this portion right here this is uh, this will show us the supportive cells. If you notice, these are in clusters, each of them, you know, up to 60 in a given time. This is a cross-section of the white matter, the spinal cord, and this white matter would, would be consisting of the actual axons of the multipolar association neurons, and surrounded, uh, surrounding them would be the oligodendrocyte cell membrane that's ex extended to myelinate them if they are myelinated. Okay, uh, as, we, as we move into the central canal and look at supportive neuroglial cells here, this chain of nuclei or this chain of cells that surround this central canal uh, would consist of ependymal cells and CSF that's being circulated by the cilia at their apical surface. This is an example of a blood vessel as is this right here lined with endothelium and as we move peripherally to the actual motor neurons that we see in this picture, um, these motor neurons uh, are going to have the need for um, these alpha motor neurons are outgoing and they're going to need to be supported um, by their supportive cells peripherally. Uh, but they are in a ventral horn location, which is gray matter of the CNS, and therefore the cells that surround them and that are dealing with these smaller motor neur or multipolar neurons would be, uh, would be supported by uh, both microglial and by astrocytes, depending on what the function would be. We'll look at those in just a moment. So this alpha motor neuron is very different from the neurons that we see right here. This would be a multipolar association neuron. This is a multipolar motor alpha neuron that's headed out to skeletal muscle. These two are going to relate to different pathways uh, or to the same pathway depending on their function. Uh, the picture that we see um, or the picture that we see here is actually from a microscope. Um, this, this view is showing uh, from our scope the ventral horn of the gray matter. All of these large neurons here, these larger multipolar neurons or alpha motor neurons that would be exiting from this area and myelinated along the length of them to innervate a skeletal muscle. This grouping right here of smaller multipolar neurons are the multipolar association neurons that would be found here and uh, interpreting and um, uh, effecting a specific response uh, in pr probably a visceral pathway or possibly connecting to these alpha motor neurons on their way to muscle. 
As we move up from here, you can see right in this area, right here you can see a mound or a lateral horn right where the pointer is now. Okay, and notice that the accumulation of cells in this area are just small multipolar association neurons that are preganglionic in nature, or going to synapse with preganglionic neurons on their way out through thoracolumbar outflow and sympathetic innervation to organs, glands, and smooth muscle. Um, as we continue, uh, you can see here that we're heading uh, dorsal, or sorry, vent dorsally from ventral. As we head up to the top here, this is the, the uh, dorsal horn that we were just looking at a moment ago. These are the neural pathways that lead out of this area, uh, and, or sorry, that lead in from this area. If this is the dorsal horn, then unipolar sensory neurons are feeding it and supplying it, and that would be from the dorsal root ganglion that we see right here looks a lot different from what we just saw in the other image, but this is a great view. Right here would be the unipolar sensory neuron cell body. That's a ganglion. It's peripheral. It's bringing information in on a converging pathway, and this would be our myelinated, uh, um, with Schwann cells, by the way, this is a myelinated uh, unipolar sensory neuron pathway feeding in along these pathways into that dorsal horn of the gray matter. Uh, study. Good luck, you guys.